Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about some plants that I regret buying slash um, already got rid of. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And yeah, let's just jump right into today's video. Okay, so I guess I'll start off with the ones that I have right here in front of me that I regret slash are still in my collection and then I'll move on to the ones that um, no longer have and I only have photos left. So uh, first one is going to be my Hoya Numularioides. This guy I regret because it just grew so big. Now it's big to the point where it's kind of too hard to sell because it's so large and I don't really want to cut it up into a bunch of different pieces and start to root it and stuff like that. But yeah, it's huge. Like it's just going round and round the stupid trellis and like suffocating itself, but it still won't bloom for me. I think if it ever were to bloom for me, then I might not regret it anymore, but I've had this for like two years, a year and a half, I don't know and it has never flowered it just keeps growing more and more leaves and has these like really weird um aerial roots that kind of creep me out so like it looks super super spiky and the roots are like so thick i don't even know what it's trying to cling on to like literally the air so yeah i don't know this one um kind of not feeling it as much anymore and in terms of fuzziness i mean it is a fuzzy leaf so i do kind of like that my patchy clada already fulfills the fuzziness need that i have so i don't really need this new malariotes anymore and this one vine is just like not attached to anything so that's kind of annoying so that's plant number one next i'll talk about this um orchid so this is a sideria japonica i think that's the name i have this one for i think like a year and a half as well so i don't know it's just lost many leaves <laughs> it used to have like i think five five or six so it's lost like three leaves and it has never put out any flower spike it's never bloomed for me for the most part it just looks like all the roots keep dying off and then having to grow new ones so it's just not thriving in my care honestly this is not a beginner orchid i should have listened to people but i didn't and i bought it and uh it's just like literally slowly dying in my home <laughs> so i don't know what to do with it it doesn't even have cute leaves it doesn't look nice it just looks like i don't know like a little sprout like an onion <laughs> but yeah i have this paired up with this cute little cow planter that i have available on my etsy shop it's handmade it's so cute i love how like cow like it is I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I just think it's so cute. This one's actually glazed both on the inside and the outside, so I don't have a lot of pots that are both glazed in and out. So this one is definitely very cool and I love it. It's available on my Etsy, like I said, and I have a few more that I want to show you guys. But yeah, this one is the first one. Unfortunately paired up with this sad, sad orchid. Next, I do want to talk about a this one, <laughs> a philodendron. So this one is my philodendron Mexicanum. Um, that I do see mealybugs on so maybe that's why the leaf is yellowing anyway um, Look at how sad that is. This is the only leaf that it's had and grown in my care for like the longest time I've had this for at least a year and it still has a juvenile Mexicanum leaf and it doesn't even have like the cute little like long ear like long lobes on the leaves It just looks like this ugly mess <laughs> and it's yellowing clearly due to mealies and um, that little growth point has been uh, sticking out for a long long time and it hasn't done anything so it's just like literally tempting me and triggering me so yeah I have this one paired up with the gloriosum planter which also really like I love how both of these are philodendrons and why can't my plant look like this and instead it it looks like that so sad this is um, another planter that's available on my Etsy shop Next up, I do want to talk about another philodendron, which clearly I'm just not thriving with philodendrons lately, so yeah, a lot of them I did get rid of, but this one, can't even get rid of it because it's so ugly. This is my philodendron varicosum. So it is a stack right now with um, one leaf coming out. Don't know if it's going to make it. Kind of looks like it's drying up, but not 100% sure. So this guy is in Lekka, not doing hot and um i'll insert a photo here of how it looked like at one point in life and um, i imported this about a year ago 
Now it looks like this. It had leaves. And that was the proof, but now this is how it's looking like. So yeah, um, just not thriving. Maybe when it grows out a leaf, I'll sell it. But in the meantime, nobody's even gonna want it when it just, when it looks like this. But yeah, another cute pot. This one is a hand carved planter with some blue and like brownish glaze. I love the texture on this one. It just looks so nice and it's just really cute. This one has no drainage hole, so it's perfect as a little catch pot. So I love that. I do want to talk about this orchid, which I've talked about so many times before, but it is my Ludicia Spider-Man. So it is a jewel orchid. And every time I show it, I feel like it looks smaller, despite it being in the future. So like it should have grown, but instead it just more of it dies off. So <laughs> yeah, this is what it's looking like right now. Honestly, it looks like a pile of moss, but if you look very closely, there are a few leaves. You just have to look very close and um, maybe one day it will graduate out of this like terrarium setting because I keep it literally banged up so it's enclosed so that it's like 100% humidity and it just doesn't want to grow for me and I think at some point I'm gonna give up but that point is not yet because um, it's still here. Last but not least, I do want to talk about this Hoya, which is the Hoya Mani Parensis. And honestly, I really like the shape of these leaves. Although I regret buying it because it decided to just put out a bunch of peduncles and then never grow leaves for me. So I kind of don't like how it's growing. So although I like the leaves, I love how it looks. I just don't really think this is the Hoya for me. There are other Hoyas that I have that grow faster, that grow more beautifully, and that flower, or it grows like constantly new leaves. This one does none of the above. So although it's cute from afar, I just don't think I want to have this in my collection and actually put in the effort to care for it. So that's the reason for this one and why I regret it. But I have this one paired up with my dual face planter with the kind of um, brushed strokes of like different shades of pink on top. So this is the mad angry side and then this is the happy side. So I really like this planter and I personally love pink. I don't know about you guys, but if you do, if you love pink as well and you have different moods like me, this is the perfect planter for you. And now I'll go through the plants that I regret buying and um, clearly have gotten rid of them. So I'll just, you know, have pictures posted of when I actually had them and posted it on my Instagram. So the first one I want to talk about is the Philodendron Pastazanum. So I know you guys heard me talk about it for a while and like, you know, it was hit and miss. Sometimes I really liked it, sometimes I really didn't. And I finally bit the bullet and just got rid of it. It's taking up a lot of space it took up time for me to care for them and it just wasn't growing as quickly as i wanted it to and just like it wasn't that special it was like just a solid green leaf no cool texture the only good thing about it was that it's heart shaped which i mean yeah i do like it but i'm kind of not too sad about getting rid of it and it's probably much happier in someone else's home and then another one i want to talk about is the philodendron the little chrysum please don't hate me guys so this one i know i've shown on my videos so so much it was a really really big plant and um it was literally past the top of the moss hole and i just didn't want to deal with it i didn't want to have to cut it back i didn't want to have to propagate it i just it was like a constant cycle with this it was growing really well towards the end so i was really happy with it and it was a really healthy plant there were like three or four cuttings inside it was like really attached to the moss pole i've already changed it once and i didn't want to change it again to like extend the moss pole so yeah that one also in a happier home but that one i kind of do miss because it used to be right beside my gigas and just like thriving together but now i still have my gigas and i finally splendid kind of is like a better version of the melanochrysum which is why i'm like if i had to choose between the three of them i want to keep those two and just get rid of the melanochrysum if you guys know what i mean next up i do want to talk about a another plant that i got rid of which also used to be one of my favorites and is the syngonium chia pence so i like my other syngonium still so my winlandii and my albo variegata so those two i still have because i find i just didn't get tired of it as quickly as i did with the chia pence chia pence when i initially bought it i thought it was the frosted heart 
<laughs> so I don't know how but I clearly got the names mixed up and then I end up buying the chia pens and although the texture of the leaves is really nice I just really like kind of more the variegation and the style of the leaves of the frosted heart so if I were to find that one I would be much happier to add that to my collection and it was just not growing as quickly as my other syngoniums so I just you know said bye to that one and um not that sad not that sad last one is my philodendron plowmanii so that one actually that was a mame for the longest time i thought it was a mame silver and then i was told that it's actually a plowmanii and i really trust my friend because she knows her shit and yeah i was um sadly betrayed <laughs> But it's okay. People mislabel their plants all the time and you know as a buyer you should do your due diligence for like Knowing how the plant looks like but clearly I did not and that is why I got myself a plowmanii when I thought it was a mommy and yeah, so I sold it as a plowmanii and I Just got rid of it. I just like I like silver variegation, which this plant really did have I just think like I like more textured leaves so like really velvety leaves or like corrugated leaves or just like you know different texture but this one has more of just like really beautiful silver variegation honestly kind of reminds me of a sodoroy which i also don't particularly love but yeah it's uh in a happier home right now it's with a happier plant mom plant dad plant owner whatever yeah that one i'm not sad about the only one i'm sad about is probably just my melano <laughs> But yeah, I got rid of a lot of philodendrons. I really like my anthuriums, my orchids, my hoyas, but philodendrons, I don't know. I think I kind of just fell out of love with them this year and it just kind of stuck around. I felt it for a while, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Comment down below if you guys have any plants you regret buying slash you already got rid of like me. I would love to know. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.